What's going on guys? This is Mitch with SC Weather. Good evening. Hope y'all been having a great week. Um, got y'all weather update. So we're going to talk about a little bit about this system that's going to move through tomorrow. Uh, it's going to spike temperatures uh, throughout the southeast, maybe up to around 70 degrees for certain areas. Just kind of depends on where you're at. But again, very similar to the last event. It didn't end up being as bad as what we thought, you know, which is a good thing. But a marginal area uh, for severe weather down here in the Panhandle and a marginal area in the eastern Carolinas again. And we're going to dive a little deeper into that, but uh, we're also going to talk about uh, another storm system that I'm really watching for early next week that has a chance for someone maybe in the southeast, definitely in the mountains, maybe the upper southeast uh, for winter weather. So before we get going, as always, um, hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. I'm very close to 1,000 subscribers. So uh, as always, I appreciate you guys' support. And just thank you all. Appreciate the growth this year for sure. So, um, general area of thunderstorms is going to develop, and I'm going to show you all this here. Uh, really, uh, probably tomorrow. Now, obviously, you're going to Mississippi, Alabama. It's going to move through a lot earlier in the day tomorrow, overnight hours tonight and to tomorrow. So, a rainy morning for guys out there in Alabama. The rain doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty quick, moves through fast, moves through. Um, uh, the Georgia area, Atlanta area, later in the morning, uh, more so into the afternoon. But into the Carolinas, it gets going. It looks like it gets enhanced here. Um, so I'm really thinking, you know, this is around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And look at this. And this is the NAM. <clears throat> look at this area of heavy rain. It almost looks like it's consolidating into a line of storms as it enters South Carolina and North Carolina. Uh, it doesn't look like an intense band, but it really gets its act together. Look, in the Midlands of South Carolina up into North Carolina. And uh, this is around, let's say, 9, 10 p.m. tomorrow, uh, Friday evening. Uh, so uh, for your Friday, uh, you know, Friday outings, evening activities, it might be pretty rocky out there. So bring, a, bring an umbrella, um, some heavy rain. Uh, might be a quick one to two hour punch if heavy rain is going to move through really any given location in the Carolinas. But, um, you know, so that's why that general risk of thunderstorms is up because, you know, it, it looks like there could be some thunder and lightning out there. Nothing crazy. But uh, as you get later overnight, we got to watch for some spin ups here in eastern, the eastern Carolinas. It's not really going to be a favorable time period as you look at the time here. Looks like this is around midnight to overnight. But this is the area for uh, winds. I think everybody, especially in the Carolinas, is going to be at risk for some winds, high winds. You know, early in the week when the system moved through, um, there wasn't necessarily really severe weather, but gosh, the winds were whipping, what was it, Monday morning? So it's going to kind of be like that again. So here comes our system. We'll get into tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, this is this afternoon. We'll get into deeper into tomorrow, um, getting into overnight evening and look at these high winds and these are potential wind gusts off the nam uh 20 30 35 miles per hour uh, but look how much it increases it begins to a low pressure starts to really get cranking here and uh really get some winds cranking in the carolinas as we get into the 9 to 10 p.m range so uh very windy overnight tomorrow night in the carolinas uh I've said this before. If you got if you live somewhere where you know you really can hear the winds howling outside, you're really going to hear them howling tomorrow um, as this front moves through and this system moves through. But look as the low pressure gets to cranking in the eastern Carolinas, and this could really turn to a really big time high end wind event here in the um, North Carolina mountains. Here, um, uh, really potential, especially the western Carolinas. It's just low pressure just gets going. And the front moves through, and everything is just enhanced. Um, the dynamics of this storm is going to be crazy as it gets going um, into the northeast. It really can tur could turn into an all-out nor'eastern. Uh, that is a tricky forecast up there for sure. I, I feel bad for them guys up there. But um, as we get into Saturday morning, winds are still going to be gusty across the Carolinas. But you see the stout cutoff in winds out here. So eventually, winds will die down as we get into the weekends. And what looks to really Looks to be a great, uh, beautiful day across uh, at least the Carolinas for Saturday. But um, as far as uh, the significant tornado parameter, because in that discussion from the uh, Storm Prediction Center, there is a mention of a possible spin up. So this is where it really, you know, there might be some water spouts off the coast of the Carolinas, but nothing that looks uh, really bad for the even the Eastern Carolinas, even the area in the marginal. 
Um, but there is a spike right there overnight, Friday into Saturday. We need to watch the Eastern Carolinas overnight when a lot of people are going to be sleeping. So something could sneak up on anybody um, as far as a quick spin up as uh, the system exits. But here's potential rainfall off the NAM. I don't expect this to be any kind of flooding event or anything like that, but um, the upstate is favored for a little bit more rain off the NAM. But anyways, anywhere from a quarter inch to an inch of rain across um, basically anywhere in the southeast, maybe two inches isolated areas who gets under really heavy rain. It just kind of depends on what you are, where you are. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about. We're gonna we're gonna uh, shift our attention to this system. It's not been talked about much uh, for Monday into Tuesday or Sunday into Tuesday. And uh, here we go. We get through our system. And this is the 18Z Euro. It's not used a whole lot. Um, we normally go off the 12Z or OZ Euro. But um, this is the 12, This is the 18Z Euro. So um, we get this system out of the way. Look at all that snow potential for the, north, north, the interior northeast. But as we get this system, this is the system we've been watching that's been trending northwest in the last few days, really, really big time. I mean, it's just been a pretty stout trend over the last 48 to um, 72 hours. And all of a sudden, you got two areas of energy kind of here and here. And one of the areas of energy is basically low pressure. And uh, they're trying to get going together here and kind of, you know, just uh, work together to really form a system here. But there is enough marginal cold air. We're going to talk a little bit about that here in a couple minutes to really have a potential to put, make this a potential mountain event for snow. And even Kentucky, uh, Virginia, we're really watching you, especially even, even outside. But this is as far as it goes out. It's 90 hours out. Uh, guys in West Virginia, I know I know, I got a guy you know watches some of my stuff in West Virginia. Got to watch out for this system, man. Um, this could really, you might be in just enough cold air to really just be all snow. But check it out, the border of Virginia and North Carolina. And like I said, this is as far as it goes out. The only 18Z only goes out about 90 hours, which is all the way up until about Monday morning. Um, but that is some, you know, the, there's enough energy here to where it's kicking uh, moisture inland to produce, you know, maybe the potential first mid-Atlantic snow event of the season. We're going to watch this. They have been in a kind of a drought as far as snow. Um major snow events and i'm not calling this a major event but this might be an event so we're going to watch this um i'm going to get into this right here basically these are the two areas of energy here um that moves through that's the big nor'eastern potential over there in the northeast right there but what you got is this area of energy and this area of energy and this is going to be the low pressure that probably gets going um well not the low pressure but just the the two and two to kind of mash together to make this a system but they don't completely phase and really get going but there is potential here and I mean this the anomalies right here pretty much highlight this um, <clears throat> so we're gonna watch this but let's talk about temperatures real quick um, well actually let's j just jump to the GFS so this is that trend I want to talk about and I want to explain this here so this is the low pressure that really has potential to do something here it gets going this is that classic look. If you had enough cold air here, we, we could really be talking about a, a more widespread southeast winter storm. But this system goes across central Florida, um, and there, it just taps into enough moisture right here off of inter, like area energy trying to phase with this. And um, what happens here? So I'm going to freeze it right here. Go back to this. Every time I click down, that is basically the run prior to that run. So this run is from, and if you look up here, this is 12Z. So this is 18Z. This is the run right now, the latest GFS. If I go back, that's 12, 12Z. So that's the run prior to that. This is the run prior to that. So the morning run. I talked about this and we all watched my video um, yesterday. Um, so basically what I'm showing you here is watch how this low pressure sinks further and further to the south uh, southeast here. Each time I click down to the point where it's not even there anymore. So I'm going to click back, and basically this is a run from, um, let's see, this is from uh, the morning of December 1st, which is when, uh, let's see, that was Tuesday. So I'm going to go all the way to the current run, and look how this system has trended further and further northwest. It'll be very interesting to see where this system is sitting when we all wake up in the morning and what it's showing. Now, eventually, the northwest the northwest trend is going to stop. It always does. 
I don't expect this to all of a sudden trend into a cut or anything where it's cutting through. Um, I don't think it's going to do that, but we're going to watch this. But check out it all of a sudden really get going right here and throw some moisture, back edge moisture. And that is a good northwest flow getting going in the mountains. But there's a lot of moisture escaping even outside of the mountains. So this is very interesting. And as it really that system really gets going, throw some more moisture. and Check out a little bit of snow in North Carolina. But what I want to show you here is <clears throat> I know I've talked about this 540 line. Um, that doesn't mean that it's uh, the air temperature is necessarily freezing all the way to the line. It's more about um, 850s here. And what I want to talk about that here is this. So <clears throat> you see this. This is basically how cold it, air, it how cold it is aloft. So you know you look here and you're saying, well, dang, um, this is the freezing line, ain't it? That's we're in the blues. And if you look right here to the same, make sure this is the same. Yep, one, one or two hours out. If you look right here, why isn't this green blue, considering the fact it looks plenty of cold enough in that same time period? Where, well, what, we, what we're dealing with is um, the actual surface air temperatures are way too warm. If I actually flip this to here, we're going to go to the actual temperatures at the same range. Um, I mean, look here in South Carolina, um, 40s and 50s for temperatures. So I'm sure you're thinking, some of y'all, you know, why doesn't that match up with, with this? Well, this talks about basically <clears throat> temperatures aloft. So how cold is it aloft? So you go here, you flip here. So what is falling right here? So you click this, say right here in Col good old Columbia, South Carolina, where I'm currently located. So I look at the... Um, soundings for this range so <clears throat> you look at this you look at the temperatures uh the red line that you're looking at and this is even I, I, this is all a learning process for me too i learn a little bit about soundings uh weekly guys <laughs> but um the red line here is the temperatures the uh green line is the dew points it's probably really small on your screen but there it is right here so the far further you get up right here in a nutshell the farther up in the atmosphere you get. So if you look at the um, the red, notice as far as the temperature is going up, basically that's the temperature the further up you go in the atmosphere. So you see how it goes it goes down, and this is the temperature showing in Celsius. So you look at these, follow this red line and the dew points. So the dew points are, it's, it's super dry, basically, up in the atmosphere. So you look at the air temperature, and this is at the surface right here. So it's saying it's 47 degrees at the surface and 43 degree dew point. That is not going to even close to get the job done. So um, you would need dew points much lower than this to basically crash the column. So basically um, it would create a wet bulb. Um, and we'll get deeper into that when time needs to come for us to. But um, <clears throat> basically, the temperatures drop big time from the surface up in the atmosphere all the way to negative 10 degrees Celsius, which is, I don't know, about negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is absolutely brutally cold in the atmosphere, but at the surface, um, where it matters, um, it is not cold at all. So um, you've got basically the good old classic moisture moving out and the cold air moving in too late. So um, <laughs> the mountains could potentially get another big event out of this, but we're gonna continue to watch this. I'll be honest, for my folks here in Georgia, uh, honestly, I think the way this system is, I don't think Alabama or Mississippi have any impact from this, but the area I wanna watch is this area right here, kind of, if we're talking about the um, Carolinas and Virginia. I don't think South Carolina is gonna have really see anything out of this but this is an area I want to watch as far as can we get more of a surge of moisture can we get a, maybe some more cold air we need a we need a really a high pressure on top and really don't have anything we don't really have a good influence of arctic air we're dealing with stagnant marginal uh, cold air and it just is not going to get the job done even if we can get the perfect perfect um, low pressure placement here so we need more cold air but i think areas maybe in the triad of north carolina um piedmont maybe need to watch this maybe not maybe not charlotte necessarily but maybe if we can get some heavier rates what it does is it helps to crash the columns called dynamic cooling um it'll help lower the temperatures 
um, up to a point, down to a point is what I mean. But um, So we're going to watch this. This is going to be a system that's going to be worth talking about over the next couple of days. And we'll keep you updated, guys. But that's about all I got. Um, y'all have a good night of sleep. And y'all stay blessed as usual.